it's beer o'clock on Real Craft Beer. Today we've got a beer from Scottish and Newcastle, or what used to be Scottish and Newcastle. It's their Newcastle Brown Ale, coming in a 550 milliliter bottle at 4.7% ABV. Clear glass bottle. Um, brewed in Tadcaster. So without further ado, there's the bottle cap. Let's get this beer out into a glass and see what we get. One of the beers, some of you will know that I said that I would never ever review. And we'll get into that in a moment. Um, it, it is, it will be an unbiased review. This will be my honest opinion on this beer. Hopefully they've changed it since the last time I drank it. But beer in the glass. Okay, it looks like a brown ale. Two finger, slightly off white head, um, good levels of carbonation. Um, very clear to look at. <clears throat> Looks like a chestnut brown ale. World famous beer, this one. Known all over the world. Very clear, nice even carbonation. Um, brewed in the UK by Heineken. This is a Heineken owned brewery. Let's get the aroma. It's, yeah, just, I mean, I, I said I'm going to be honest. I will be honest. Um, it looks good. looks very, very promising. And that's because they brewed it because I think the people who drink this these days or, or currently probably drink with their eyes. Um, it's not unfiltered. It's not bottle conditioned. It's really tinny. One of the most tinny, coppery beers that I've ever got the aroma from. It's like somebody's got a handful of copper nails and they chuck them into the bottom of the pint. And you've picked the pint up by mistake after like two hours of these copper nails being in the bottom of this glass. And you've gone, ooh, ooh, it's, it really isn't, it's not a very pleasant aroma. Very coppery, very tinny. Let's dive in. Cheers. Metallic would be the word, wouldn't it? Me a, a lot of metallic taste. Oh, blimey. That... If ever, if ever you want to taste a mass produced bitter that maybe somebody's told you in the past, <clears throat> this is as far away from a bitter that you can possibly get. Or let me, let me try and word it another way after having another sip. Oh, if ever you want to try a beer, taste a beer that's been ruined by a mass produced beer company like Heineken, then try this. This, if you want to have an example of a beer that's been completely ruined by a takeover, a merger then taste this beer. I never, what my, my old business partner, I had a business partner who was an electrician and he only drank this, he only drank this beer. I got to know him first off um, in the Royal Hotel in 1999. When I, when I left the army, got a bar job, 
Um, and there was, there was a fridge full of Newcastle brown ale. And this guy would come in to the pub every afternoon, three o'clock. He wouldn't go past three o'clock working. He'd be in the pub by three o'clock. And he would have at least, at least eight bottles of this a night. At least eight bottles. So I, um, I got to know... I, I got to know this guy. Um, I tried a bottle of this. I wonder what was all the fuss was about because he was the only person in the pub to drink this. And they used to get it in especially for him. And and he passed away now. He passed away about pff, 10 months ago. And even when he was... Because the pub closed. Um, it's now a Tesco. The Royal Hotel in Barry is now a Tesco. So he, he, he now drank in a a Green King pub called the Ship Hotel. And when he passed away, they put a plaque on the bar and they put a bottle of Newcastle Brown Ale and a pint glass at his wake. And I sat there all night. That's all he would drink. So so I drank a bottle or two of new and I didn't like it back then. I didn't know too much about beer back then. I didn't, I, but I, I knew, I was like, oh, blimey, what is this stuff? Um, I drank um, another, I can't remember the name of the bitter now, but I, I wouldn't drink this. It was kind of like, it, it, it tastes like a headache. It tastes like a headache. But I imagine, and just quickly to finish off that story, you're wondering why I mentioned all of that. I, I used to tell him, Paul, it's made by Heineken. And he would never believe me. It was written on the back of the bottle, Heineken. I would tell him, this is no more than a coloured lager. It's a, it's a it's a lager with a bit of kind of like flavourings and colourings added to the beer, and and he wouldn't. He just like he used to get like furious. He would really defend this beer, and he wouldn't. He wouldn't accept. He wouldn't accept it was made by Heineken. Wouldn't accept it, and even though it was written on the back of the bottle, he was a brilliant guy, mine. He was a brilliant guy. Um, Really good mate of mine, but but on that subject of the beer, just just refused to like accept that it was from Heineken, and I asked him the question because he's he's already always drunk this beer. I said, has it had it changed at all? No, nope, no, nope, absolutely not. Still the same beer. It must have been. It. What I'm trying to say is, it must have been a good beer. It must have been a good beer once upon a time for it to have the esteem, the well, the reason why um, it's a huge brand, it must have been a really good brown ale once upon a time. And if you know, and if you tasted it when it was a really good brown ale, please comment. I'd love to, to hear your comments. But um, this is now, for me, this is undrinkable. This is an undrinkable beer. It's brown gravy taste and really coppery really tinny massively massively mass produced and I, I, I don't understand it I cannot understand why would a brewery like Heineken take over this brand and ruin it why would they and it same can be said for John Smith's same can be said for all of the the, the, the the Tetleys, that was another beer. Why was it ruined? Why why would you go out of your way to buy a brewery that's got a great big brand, a good brand that sells, and ruin it? You wouldn't, you know, Kraft has taken over Cadbury. Dairy milk and Cadbury, it tastes the same. Why would they take it over and ruin the chocolate taste? Why would they do that? It's just, it, it, it's silly. But in the beer industry, in the beer industry, it's fine. It's fine to do that. You've only got to take Beaver Town. Beaver Town's beers taste nothing like they used to. And that was after a minority um, steak was bought by Heineken. Um, Marston's, they don't brew the best beer in the world. But I really fear, I really fear for Marston's going forward after they were had a big chunk of them taken out by, um, I think it was Heineken again. Um, I don't know. 
well, where do we go? Where do we go from here with these with these iconic, famous old brands? Are they just going to die away and, and never to be seen again? Because I can't imagine, I can't imagine many youngsters buying this and going, this tastes really, really good. I just can't imagine it. So it dies with a generation. It dies with a generation of people, this, this beer will. Because it's just not good enough. It's just not good enough to... to to stay around anymore but perhaps that's what Heineken wants perhaps Heineken want that so you get to drink their Heineken it beats me it baffles me I've drunk enough of that I'm not drinking anymore that'll ruin my day that will give me the most horrendous hangover I, I can taste the hangover in the beer I'm not drinking any more of that beer that is an appalling appalling example of of big beer buying something like a, a, a decent brand and just ruining the brand that's no more than a two out of ten so two out of ten from real ale craft beer please put your comments in the comments box subscribe to our daily beer and food reviews give us a big fat thumbs up boom cheers